Recession, 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 recession. Everybody's talking about a recession. Prince, when's recession going to come? The other day, I was getting my hair cut. My barber was cutting my hair. I said, hey, Prince, what do you think about this recession? You know, uh, I was out in, uh, I, was getting a, I was getting a shuttle ride down in Louisiana. About a week ago, I was down in Louisiana. The, the shuttle driver said, hey, Prince, um, um, he didn't say my name, but he said, hey, what do you think about this recession that's coming up? The shuttle driver, taxi cab drivers, Uber drivers, nothing wrong with those professions. Barber, everybody, the recession. Hey, you know, people talking about it like it's uh, bacon cookies, almost. Hey, man, you know, recession when it's coming Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh, what do we have going on, right? Now, I uh, said this months ago. Maybe I was ahead. Maybe I thought about this a while ago. Uh, months ago, I did a broadcast, and I talked about the recession coming up. Why did I do this? I did this because the recession that's coming up, I told everybody, this is a repeat of 19, I think it was 1981, when Paul Volcker was the Federal Reserve Chair, right? And once, uh, so now with Paul Volcker being the, the Fed Chair, with Paul Volcker being the Fed Chair, we had interest rates go up all the way up to 20%, if I'm not mistaken. That means that mortgages, people was buying mortgages, if they had very good credit, it was getting at 16, 17%. We had inflation so bad, gas prices so bad, we had stagflation, we had unemployment and inflation at the same time, creating stagflation, and the Federal Reserve started to raise interest rates so high that it pushed us into a recession. When we went into this recession, it drenched out all that inflation. Everything was fine again. So when I came back today, the only thing, the only indicator that's off is employment. Unemployment is still relatively low. The job market is still re relatively tight. It's very hard to find people that want to work. Um, I mean, not that that want to work. It's very competitive right now in the job market. If you are an employer, if you're looking for people to hire, it's a very competitive market. The employee has the ball right now. Well, we know it will, it will change. Now. When this particular thing happens, I thought about it. I said, man, you know, months ago, I was like, you know what? They're going to raise interest rates. Interest rates are going to lead to a recession. That's how we're going to get out of this mess. This is what they did in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, this is like deja vu. And, you know, my mentor, Uncle James, told me the same thing. When he kind of pushed it, he was here in the 70s. I wasn't here in the 70s. I wasn't here in the early 80s. Uh, you know, I was born in the mid 80s. So being born in the mid 80s. You know, I didn't get my bearings about myself till I was in my 90s, but who, who cares? But anyway, long story short, when I looked at this, I said, this is the only way we're going to get rid of, rid of, you know, inflation. So I said, well, is a recession necessary to get rid of inflation? I made an episode on that, talking about that. That was my synopsis of looking back to when was the last time inflation had been this high and what did he do to get rid of it? It pretty much was a self-induced inflation. It's like um, I'm not... A, medical person. I'm not a doctor by any stretch of the imagination and stretch of the imagination. But you know, it's like when you, you see people who get into certain injuries and they put them in a coma in order to have surgery on to make them better, right? Or when you see people that get frostbite, a frost, you know, a frostbite or whatever, you know, um, they cut off the finger in order to save the hand. When the hand catches gangrene, they cut off the finger to save the hand because they, if they keep that finger, then guess what? It's going to get so much worse and it'll kill the whole hand. So guess what? They have to suffer with cutting their own finger off of losing the finger in order to save the whole hand. Yesterday, this was reiterated by Jay Powell, Jerome Powell. He said at the Fed chair, things are going to get worse before they get better. Now, Prince, you talked about you're talking about the most predicted recession ever. This is what got me nervous, y'all. I'm very nervous about this. I'm very nervous because everywhere I go, everybody know a recession is coming. Everybody know economical downturn is coming. It's like the clockwork. Prince, why are you scared of this? I studied the history, as y'all know, that my latest read right now that I'm working on right now is the trillion dollar triage. Right? And I studied. Market crashes, market cycles, things have happened in the market. I even done my research and talked to people who were there. Talked to people who was there on the stock exchange floor when 87 happened. When the 2000 dot-com bomb ha happened, real estate crisis of 08, 2020 pandemic, 
all these catastrophic things that have happened. You know, it's not too many people that's living right now that was here for the Great Depression. Um, you know, unless you, you know, I mean, heck, even Warren Buffett wasn't here at that time. But I studied these market histories and these economical downturns and these crashes. Here's the thing that I learned about all of them and the thing I learned the most. They're always unpredictable. Unpredictable. Meaning that every time you look at every recession, everything that happens, it happens out of the blue. The black swan, it just comes out of nowhere. Number one, it always happens at market highs. Pandemic, market was at an all-time high in 2020, March of 2020. 2008, when we had the real estate crisis, market was at an all-time high. Dot-com, Bob, boom. Market was at an all-time high. 87. Markets were at an all-time high, ladies and gentlemen. When markets are at an all-time high, this is when we have the unpredictable crash, recession, just kind of comes out of nowhere. Nobody sees it coming, just like we remember two years ago, the pandemic. Who would have thought an airborne illness would come through and just wreck the economy in 2020? Nobody saw it coming. Real estate market crash. It was at an all-time high when these things happened. Ask yourself today, are we at an all-time high? No, we're not. S&P 500 so far this year is about down 20, almost 30%. Last time I looked at it, 21 or 22%. You know, so when you look at it, we're not at an all-time high. Also, on top of that, it's so predictable that it's scary. Everybody knows about it. Everybody knows. Jerome Powell said it yesterday. I wrote down a couple of notes. He said unemployment's going to go up. He turned around and said, we're going to get a little bit more pain before we get better. When he's saying these things, he's talking about economical slowdown, an economical delay of what's going to happen to the market. So this what scares me. When everybody in their mama is going right, I start to look left. Why? That's how it has always been in the particular market. When everybody was high off of cryptocurrencies, everybody wanted to get in, everybody rushed into cryptocurrencies, you can see how that transpired as of today. Same thing with stocks. In 2020, when the market crashed, people were like, oh, forget that. The market started to rebound. Everybody said, oh, the market is rebounding. Everybody, let's get into it. Let's get into it. The market is rebounding. The market is rebounding, right? Everybody ran into the market because the stock market was going up. A lot of people caught it at the top. Last year, technology companies was a gem for my portfolios. I look like a genius in 2021. I look like a genius in 2020. I successfully navigated the bull. I grabbed that bull by the horns. And I let my portfolio and my client's portfolio out of a bull market, patting myself on the back. Only to turn around in 2022 and to see the return of the bear come running out of the pen again. Last time it came and running out in 2020, it had a uh, coronavirus on his nose. This year, you don't see it, right? So that, that this year around, you don't know what it is. Everybody's like, hey, you know what? All that inflation, we pushed trillions of dollars into the economy. We push trillions of dollars in the economy in a matter of months through PPP loan, through stimulus packages. You know, everybody bank accounts got stimulated, right? Twelve hundred bucks here, twelve hundred bucks there, five hundred bucks for your kids. Print the money, give it to the people, right? Now, when this happened, everybody loved to get this money, but every cause has an effect. Every action has a reaction. The reaction for pumping trillions of dollars with this trillion dollar triage book that I'm reading, you pump trillions of dollars into the economy, that's automatically going to increase the demand for goods and services. In most cases, people buy more when they make more money. They don't save more. So as people brought more, people had a bigger demand for goods and services. Guess what? At the same time, we had a supply chain issue. When supply is low and demand is high, what happens to prices? Prices increase. Here's a nugget nobody's talking about with the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is slowly to, to boost the economy. What did they do back in 2020? Lowered interest rates all the way to zero. 
and pump money into the stock market. Lower interest rates all the way to the zero and pumped about $95 billion a month into the stock market. And you saw the roaring up. Oh, man, look at the stock market is back. Ooh, it's going to a new highs. Now that we have all this inflation, they're doing the opposite. They are raising the interest rates, pulling money out of the market. Nobody talks about pulling money out of the market. Federal Reserve, $95 billion that they put into the market, they were pumping up the market, a.k.a. they said in a fancy way, we will be adding to our balance sheet. We will be shrinking our balance sheet, adding to our balance sheet, buying more stocks. It's just like somebody comes to my company and say, hey, Prince, um, I'm going to buy a bunch of your books. I'm not going to pay you, Prince, but I'm going to buy a bunch of your books. I'm not going to print money and just throw it in the air. I'm just going to buy a bunch of stocks. Buy a bunch of my books, of course, the money is going to generate to me, swell up my company, get my evaluations high, all those other good things, right? So now they're doing the opposite. You are seeing money being pulled out of the market. You are seeing interest rates being rising up. This would let people believe unemployment is on the way. That things are going to get more painful before they get better. Right? Also, mortgage rates, real estate market, all time high. Everywhere you go. Two years ago, last year, everybody was like, man, I feel like a genius. My crypto was up. My house. I brought it for a hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars, and now it's worth five hundred thousand. Made a hundred grand off my house, or a million dollars off my house in equity. Got a million dollars of equity. My cryptos are hitting all time high. You know, everybody said Bitcoin over a thousand dollars by the end of the year. Everybody's happy. Stocks are up. Stocks doing well in 2022, 2021. Stocks are up. Your house is up. Cryptocurrencies up. Everybody's happy. Now that things are on a downturn, what do people do? That leads me to my first question. What is the best way to prepare for a recession? We're going to talk about that here. The best way to prepare for a recession. After the break, we're going to take a break. And I mean a very quick break. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk about ways to prepare for a recession that is also predictable this year. Stay tuned. And we are back here. Best ways to prepare for a recession. The most predictable recession we've heard of of all times. The Federal Reserve got up yesterday and said, hey, unemployment is probably going to go up, ladies and gentlemen. The dollar is strengthening. Inflation is probably going to go up. And guess what? My interest rates are going to go up. So right now, with interest rates going up, it's going to drive the demand for houses, right? You know, I purchased my home two years ago, two, three years ago. Interest rates are at 2%. Now, interest rates are at 5 or 6%. Right? What would you do to prepare for a particular recession? First question is you got to ask yourself, are you a short or long term person? Take me, I'm a long term person. What is Prince Dykes doing to prepare for a recession? Number one, I'm riding up oil. I'm riding a train on oil. So I purchase oil and I have shorts put into place. Well, not shorts, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in stops. I have stops placed in the, put into place. I'm going to buy some oil. I'm going to ride oil for a couple of months. After those couple of months are done, I'm going to get, you know, probably get rid of oil. I'm not a long term person on oil because I believe at the midterm election, things are going to get rough when Congress is start to focus on oil prices. And I don't want to be the person stuck holding oil. So short term, I'm looking at oil. Long term, I'm looking at um, consumer discretionary. Prince, why is this? When we had that big economical downturn in March of 2020, you probably see energy was at the bottom. In March of 2020, energy was like the worst performing sector out of all of these sectors. But guess what now? 
Two years later, energy is the biggest and best performance sector and the only performance sector of 2022, essentially, out of the 11 sectors that we have. So now I look at it again. I said, hmm, what sector is performing the worst? It's consumer discretionary. Because of inflation, as inflation prices go and as prices go up with inflation, inflation, people buy less, especially things. People don't go out to the movies as much. People don't go out and buy, sit up on Amazon and just buy ram, random stuff. People don't go shopping in high reflationary periods. People try to find ways to stash money. So with consumer discretionary being the lowest and the most beat up sector, I have to start with that sector to look for some gems that are in there. One of them being a household name, Amazon. Amazon is a consumer discretion. They just did a split, um, was it Monday, last week or whatever? What's it, this Monday? I think it was this Monday. They did a split down to $126. Now they're fighting to stay above 100 bucks. So I don't know when the last time Amazon has been a long time, I can tell you that, that Amazon was $100 a share. It split 20 to 1 shares all the way down from about $2,400. Um, all the way down, right? To a little bit over two grand, I think, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But, um, you know, a couple thousand dollars where Amazon was sitting at before it decided to do a split. Now, the Amazon has split all the way down to $100. I think it's $102 at the time of this recording. Now you are seeing people, that's where I'm looking. So for the short term, I'm looking at oil. For the long term, I'm looking at Amazon and consumer area distressions. Um, I may pick Amazon or if you depend on your risk level, I may pick the entire sector. I think it's XLY, it's the entire sector. Or I may do a leverage bearish, sorry, leverage bullish ETF called WANT, W A N T. Looking into WANT, who's at 20, I don't know, 20 bucks, probably under, pretty sure it's under 20 bucks now. So for about 15 bucks, this is something that when consumer discretionary was at its peak of November of last year, this thing was over 100 bucks. Now that it's all the way down to 15 bucks, it's been thrown away, it's been forgot about. Everybody's talking about inflation and how it's going to hurt, hurt consumers and gas prices and all this other stuff. World is almost coming to an end. Politicians speaking. We got wars going on, all these things like this. Guess what? A year from now, a year and a half from now, we've been to forgot all this stuff even happened. And I want to be in a sector or in a position that's doing extremely well that I can get paid back from. So preparing for a recession, if you are a long-term person like myself, for the short term, I'm going to look for oil, and then um, I'm going to ride the wave of oil, and then I will dump oil. Then I will probably look into, you know, of course, I'm going to be buying an index fund, but looking at something that can, I think that can outperform an index. And consumer discretionary has gotten beaten up so bad that I think it's going to have the biggest rebound. Also, the NASDAQ out of the top three, the NASDAQ, the tech companies have getting, gotten obliterated. Anytime you see economical downturns happen, it's always those high-flying companies those are the ones who get hit the worst every single time. So, ladies and gentlemen, that would be my way to prepare. Uh, another way is to, now, if you are, uh, it, like, it all depends on who you are, right? I would look at it this way. If you are a long, if I was a short-term person and I was getting ready to retire, hopefully you already had your money in bonds and money into cash flowing assets that you didn't have to kind of worry about, this whole equity market crisis or whatever. Um, so, it all depends on where you're at in life. If you're just a short-term person, if, uh, you know, um, a short-term person, you just never know. But some key rule of thumbs are preparing. Number one, I would start to save money. I wouldn't be as conservative if you have a job because usually um, once thing, people's companies start to lay off, that nice job that you just got, you'll probably be the first one out the door if things got tight. So look at, econ um, I would start to save money. And I, if I was a short-term person, if I had the money to be able to invest through this, I would invest big time and consistently all the way through this. Just imagine this is everybody last year was just talking about, man, I was so, uh, the, the financial illiterate people said, man, I wish, um, I wish I would have brought, I could have had the opportunity to buy the people who was financially literate was like, man, I'm so glad that this dip happened so I can buy more. I can go in and buy so many things and buy things like that or whatever. Because, I mean, right now, when you see the entire market just get slaughtered, all the sectors get slaughtered, you got to ask yourself why this is happening and what is causing this to happen. Great buying opportunity for investors. This is the time you take your money, the money that you have, and look for ways to put it uh, into investments. Real estate, I'm staying away from right now because I feel like real estate is one of the hottest sectors of the market right now. They are hot and you have interest rates. 
They're building houses like crazy. Interest rates are rising. And I think we're going to miss timing where we're going to end up having too many houses, not enough buyers, and you're going to see foreclosures throughout the neighborhood and houses that are trying to be sold that are not being sold. That's something that I don't, that's a market that I'm kind of weary of. I would love to have a rental property. I get it. I understand it. But right now the market is just a little too sweet and a little too high for my blood and for my likings. I like to look for things that are on sale, things that are getting beat up. So when you're looking to just keep your money and maintain it, have it grow a little bit, you know, that's when you look for things that are already stable. Something like the S&P 500, large companies. Like look at Coca-Cola. It's not going to go out of business, but it's not going to turn into Tesla either. So that's how I look at, um, you know, pretty much the houses and things like that. You know, not weary of that. I want to find that small little company that's getting obliterated, that's going to shoot to the moon once we start to make our way out of here. And, you know, I'm kind of plowing through paperwork. I want to see it. I wish I was that good to be able to pick them out, but apparently I'm not, you know. So, but um, that's what I'm looking at. Consumer discretionary. I'm looking at the Amazons of the world, and I'm going to look deeper into some companies who've gotten beaten up in the consumer discretionary period that was doing extremely well. But you got to be careful. You don't want to be chasing yesterday winners. So I'm going to see who was doing extremely well financially and who has the potential to grow and make it through all of this mess that we're going through. And because, you know, you're going to have brighter days on the other side. So, ladies and gentlemen, the most predicted recession I've ever seen. Usually recession kind of starts after something we didn't see. We don't see it. We don't know it's coming. But nowadays, we all know it. Everybody's talking. That's what one thing that makes me weary. It's just like they said the old story when the guy was getting his shoes shined and the guy that was shining his shoes said, hey, start giving him stock advice. When the person, when the guy was getting a cab to work on Wall Street, and the person that was giving him the cab was giving him giving well giving him the cab ride, so to give him stock advice, he knew he needed to go in and sell everything that he had. Pretty funny. That's the one thing that makes me weary. Everybody has predicted this recession, and since that everybody has predicted predicted this recession, everybody is going in saying, "Hey, well, this recession is going to happen today. It's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to be like this." That's what makes me, makes me very weary. I said it months ago that I felt like a recession was necessary in order to get rid of this inflation because that's what they did in the early 80s. But now that I hear so many people on this recession bandwagon, hey, y'all, the recession coming. They're talking like it's a cab that's coming to pick somebody up that everybody knows about this recession. And that's the one thing that makes me nervous because whenever has the masses been right when it came down to Mr. Market, who had his own mind, his own way of doing things, and his own way of looking at things. So. That's my synopsis on, the, um, you know, uh, the market being so predictable that I am weary of it. And also, how would I prepare and to get into a recession? How would I prepare as an investor, right? As an investor, what would I do? How would I look at things to start to prepare for a recession where I want to go? If you're an investor, if you just started investing earlier this year and last month, this is where you get your bones. This is how you earn your bones. Because if you haven't been through a market drawback, how can you really be an investor? You got to go through the market drawback. So this is like a qualification card that you're getting to see if you can survive through a market correction and a downturn and still come out victorious. So um, I'm proud to say back in the pandemic, I was there. Oh, wait, I was around and I was there, but I wasn't as heavy as I am today. So, um, yes, I look to create memories and to do things like that. Well, uh, hopefully you guys and girls got some out of this episode. Um, the most predictable recession ever <laughs> that we've never seen happen. Uh, usually, you know, we, I don't want to continue to be the dead horse, but uh, hopefully you guys and girls got something out of this. Also, y'all already know my name. My name is Prince Dykes. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Think Tech Hawaii. You can go ahead and subscribe to them. Um, follow me here on Think Tech Hawaii. I have a bi-weekly show, The Prince of Investment. Shout out to Jay Fidel for that name. And shout out to Mike, the producer, that made this show happen tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, y'all already know my name is Prince Dykes. I'm the Prince of Investment. And to the next video, podcast, or cartoon, peace, be safe. I'm out, and thank you.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.